Weird Science. Made of the future. I remember the day it all began. Marge had called me on the phone and asked me to come over. She had something important to tell me. I'm sorry, Alvin, but I'm afraid it's all over. Here's your rain back. I, I don't love you anymore. I'm going to marry Bob. But Marge, we, you, and I. I couldn't believe my ears. I left Marge's house in some sort of a stupor. Marge and I through. I, I can't. I, I, I don't. We were to be married. I walked dejectedly down the row of brownstone houses and out into the square at Rockefeller Center. Bob, my best friend, take it away from me. I, I won't. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we see another example of the architecture. It was one of those guided tours that one can take through Rockefeller Center. And my preoccupation, I joined them. Although, I was only half conscious of what was said. Notice the crudely designed lighting arrangements? A lack of imagination? I hate to have lived then. How underdeveloped their sciences were. Huh? Lived then? Sciences were? Had I heard correctly? I'd been thinking of mods, so I hadn't been listening carefully. But, and now, if there are no objections, we will begin our return trip. What kind of tour was this? I followed the group down into the basement of the huge edifice. Never on any tour that I had taken before had we gone to the basement. Suddenly, as we turned a darkened corner, what the, what a strange vehicle. If you all file in and secure yourselves in your seats, what a relief to be going back. I slipped into the curious looking craft along with the others and following their examples, secured myself in a seat. All right, everyone, ready. Ready. There was a tremendous explosion and I felt my body grow limp. I tried to turn my head, but my muscles did not respond. I felt like a rag doll. Then, just as quickly as it had begun, it was over. All out, we're back in 2150. You'll find your clothes in the lockers. 2150, so that was it. I had joined a group that had gone back in time 200 years to, to see what civilization had been like in the past. And now, I have returned with them to their present and to what is for me, the future. I moved into the locker room along with the men of the group and watched as they rid themselves of their 1950 costumes and donned their 2150 clothing. Oh, oh, now what? Then I saw one locker with no one nearby and some 2150 clothes hanging inside. I quickly changed. I'll leave before the owner of these duds returns. I went out into the most beautiful sight I had ever seen. A city of shining metal and sparkling glass. So this is the city of 2150. Glorious. Simply glorious. I stepped onto moving sidewalks and began touring the breathtaking city. There were so many amazing sights. That must be the 22nd century version of an automobile. And that must be an office building. I... Huh? What? My eyes fell upon a sign. I stood, paralyzed with amazement as I read it. Lonely, a constructive wife kit will end your problem. Satisfaction guaranteed. Choose your own types. Blondes, brunettes, redheads. Come in for a demonstration. Now, this the happy owners available. My curiosity aroused, I entered the strange store. A lovely sales girl stepped forward. Yes, sir. Can I help you? I, I I saw the sign. I was wondering if I would. Do you prefer a blonde, brunette, or redhead? Blonde, I suppose, but I don't know what. If you'll step over to Miss Gale, she'll measure you for your size. He's about five, Miss Don. Really? I, I, I don't. Do you want the regular kit or the deluxe kit? Why, I, uh, what's the difference? Well, the regular kit contains a normal wife, while the deluxe kit provides you with a deluxe wife. Never nags, never argues, doesn't object to you staying out late with the boys, always smiles, cooks divinely, sews, adores you completely, obeys your every command. In other words, the perfect wife. Oh, uh, I want the deluxe kit. Here you are, sir. Deluxe kit B5. B means blonde. Five means five foot five inches tall. If the results are not satisfactory, please bring her in and we'll exchange her. Uh, how much money do I pay? Pay? Money? I don't understand. Here is the kit. It's yours for the asking. Just show me your society card. 
Society card. I fumbled through my pockets. Yes, there was a card. I pulled it forth. All right, sir. Here you are. And if you have a sister who wants a perfect husband, we have kits for her, too. Thank you, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Dawn. I was trembling as I left the shop with my prize. Was it possible? I'd show Marge she wasn't the only woman in my life. I'd spite her. I stepped onto the uh, moving sidewalk. I've got to find that tour and return to 1950 with this, this kit. After searching the dazzling city for hours, I found the guided tours building. This is it. Time tours. Visit our city as it was in 1950, 1850, 1750, 1650. Tour leaves every hour. I went in. All they did was ask for my card and I was admitted. No charge. As I dressed in them 1950s clothes, they gave me a 1650 tour return. Peter Schnuzelman was some character with his silver studded peg leg. Yes. New Amsterdam was very amusing. I was tempted to take the society card with me, but I felt sorry for its rightful owner, so I left it in the 2150 clothing. Soon, we were strapped in our seats, and then, all out, 1950. Now please watch your behavior, we must not be discovered. As they began their tour of Rockefeller Center, I slipped away from them and headed home with my prize under my arm. I can't wait to get started. Imagine, a real woman, all my own. As soon as I arrived home, I bolted the door and pulled the blinds, then opened the kit. Inside were many small boxes and bottles and a complete set of directions. Hmm. It says here to fill a large container with four gallons of water, then begin to add the ingredients from the bottles and boxes in numerical order. There followed the detailed explanation of the chemical properties of the body, which went completely over my head. The bathtub. I'll use that. It'll be the perfect place. I filled the bathtub with the necessary amount of water and proceeded to pour in the contents of the bottles and boxes as directed. As I added each ingredient, the liquid in the tub grew progressively thicker. It's beginning to look like flesh. It says next, place into the resulting mass, the automatic aligner and converter. That must be this little gadget. I dropped the weird little mechanism into the tub and watched as it dissolved. Then, a body is forming. I was a little embarrassed as the form took shape. She was beautiful. I went into the bedroom and brought a blanket which I placed over her. Let's see. Next, inject the contents of hyperdemics in boxes 10, starting with needle 1. That must mean these. Slowly, I emptied each hyperdermic as directed. When I was finished, I waited. She stood and opened her eyes. Well, well, where am I? Who are you? you? You're here in my apartment. I'm Alvin, Alvin Blank. She stood up. She was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. She smiled sweetly at me. My clothes, do you have them? Wait, I'll look. I looked in the kit. There was one box left unopened. It contained a costume similar to those worn in 2150. I brought it to her. Here, uh, Miss. Jean, you can call me Jean. I waited outside while she dressed. When she came out, I caught my breath. Uh, I think the first thing we need to do is get married, Jean. Married? Well, what's that? Men whistled and women stared as we made our way to the city hall. She was a lovely creature and she was mine, all mine. I now pronounce you man and wife. Now are we married, dearest? Yes, Jean. Come. We must buy you some clothes. We made the rounds of the Fifth Avenue shops and I brought her a complete wardrobe. Do you like me in this, honey? Yes, darling. You look very sweet in it. When we arrived home, Jean busied herself preparing a scrumptious dinner. What a delicious meal she made. More dessert, Alvin? No, Jean. I'm full. In the weeks that followed, I presented Jean to many friends and business acquaintances. They gaped in wide-eyed amazement. I've underestimated you, Alvin. How did you ever get such a beautiful wife? One night, we had Marge and Bob over. Marge's eyes almost popped out of her head when she saw Jean. And this is Jean, my wife. What? Very glad to meet you, Marge. Likewise, I'm sure. During the evening, Bob took me aside and confided. Alvin, you don't know how lucky you are. I'm sorry I ever married her. She's a shrew. Uh, I'm very unhappy. In fact, I'm miserable. Really, Bob? I'm surprised. It was then that I realized how much I loved Jean. She was perfect. Deluxe. The following weeks were the most wonderful weeks of my life. And then one day, as I returned home from work, Jean? Jean? She's not home. That's funny. Oh. Here is Alvin. I've gone out to the see the city. I'll be back for dinner. I think I'll take in one of those guided tours of Rockefeller Center. All my love. 
Jane. Oh no, she never came back. I searched the city high and low. I had the police and the Bureau of Missing Persons looking for her. It was no use. She must have gone on to the end of one of the very same tours that I did and returned to 2150 from where she had come. I've often tried to get back there. I've toured Rockefeller Center 112 times now, but I haven't found them. Those visitors from the future, but I'll keep trying. In the meantime, I have these to remember her by. These bottles and boxes. The end.